all sizes out here. Because I don't have a clue. I know her veins should be small, correct? <laughs> it's a big old lady. She's a manly woman. All right. Now, here's the whole process. Let's look at how it all comes together. First of all, you have what we call a little opsite. This goes over the area where I have stuck the catheter, right here. Okay? All right. You can trash that. All right, so what's the first thing that I want to do? Clean it. Oh, well, I want to look, correct? Mm -hmm. Look to see where I think a good place may be. Since it is a medical patient, where do I need to look first? Hands. In the hands. Correct. All right. Well, she's got some pretty good ones down here. So where am I going to put the tourniquet? Two, Two inches, inches above. Two inches above. Now, we cannot hold a tourniquet no longer than how? Two minutes. Two minutes. All right. When I look at the place and I palpate it, and I think this is going to be a pretty decent site, I'm going to take my alcohol, put it in the center, and in a snail shell, I'm going to start in the center and clean out. I want to look at this alcohol prep because if it's dirty, do it again. <laughs> do it until it is clean like this. All right? I'm looking at my IV catheter, 24. You know, I think I'll probably get a 20 in this one. Expiration date, good. Now, when I look at an IV catheter, Okay, I want to look and make sure that the bevel or the slice or opening is, is pointed up. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make sure the bevel is up. Make sure that the catheter itself can rotate on the needle because a lot of 20 gauge and 24 gauges have a tendency to stick. So we just go around and around. Okay, now I do not want to touch where I have cleaned. If I palpate it with my fingers, I've got to go back and clean it again. So, very sterile. At what degree angle? 30 degree. 30 degree. I make a stick. I get a flashback. Go just a little bit further. What am I doing? I'm threading the catheter off of the needle and listen. What did you hear? What's the first thing I'm doing now? Notice how I'm going to take my ring finger and I'm going to tamponade off that vein. If I don't, when I pull this, this needle out, it's going to just start pouring blood. Okay? So I want to make sure that I have my line ready. Notice I still haven't taken the end off of it. Tamponade it off. And this goes directly into, push it over there, please, the sharps container. I take the end off, and the only thing it does is it plugs in, and then this just twists up. It actually locks itself on the tubing, or on the actual hub itself. You see this? What's the next thing I'm going to do? Turn it on. I'm going to turn it on to make sure what? It that it floats. And when it does, I'm not going to worry about the drip rate right now. I'm going to cut it back down, okay? And now I'm going to look at dressing this. And you don't ever want to turn loose of it. Always make sure you have a hold of it. 
And what did I say goes in that window? The actual off-site area where that catheter has gone in. Can you see this? Okay. Can you all see that over there? Okay. And you make sure that it's stuck down pretty well. Now, these other two, we want to make a loop, and I'll show you why. These kind of stretch, and you can put one there. And we normally try to put one near the hub. That way we know where the hub is located if and when we have to give any type of medicine. Now, the reason that we put this loop and make sure that the loop is not kinked, okay? If it's kinked, it's too tight. So make sure that it flows really nice. The reason we put this extra loop is if somebody, like a first responder or whatever, accidentally steps on it and grabs it, then we still have it. Versus if they had grabbed it here and pulled it, it would pull the whole catheter out. So it's an extra safety loop, basically. Now, I want to make sure that I don't have any infiltration or any, any swelling, any redness, any bleeding in this area. Now I'll go back and I'll regulate my flow to where I want it to be. Any questions? Let me show you, since we already have it up, let's look at the reasons why we would want to stop it. Number one, the doctor says we don't need it anymore. For some reason, it's gotten irritated and it has uh, exsanguinated or, or bled around the op site. We have red streaks or irritation, or for some reason, it just blows, the vein blows and we have a big hematoma here, okay? That means DC means discontinue, we need to stop it. So the first thing, immediately, we're gonna reach up here and cut the flow rate off, okay? I wanna make sure that I have some form of tape, which I don't have here, but ready, okay? Now, I'm going to work <laughs> backwards and peeling this off. Notice I'm holding the tubing in place as I'm taking this off, okay? Notice I'm holding the hub as I'm pulling the window off. Then I want to open up my two by twos, place it over the area and put pressure on it as you bring that catheter out. Continue to hold pressure, elevate, because what does that do? It slows bleeding. Exactly. And then all of this goes in the trash. Make sure you clean up after yourself. What goes in the sharps box are the needles. Okay? Once we make sure that it's bleeding or not bleeding, if it's bleeding, we're going to continue to put pressure. If not, then we can fold it and put a piece of tape tightly over it to make sure that it doesn't bleed. It's just like when you draw blood. Anytime that you give blood, what do they put over it? Gauze like and tape. Ball or gauze or tape. All right, so any questions here? Now, the one thing, if you'll hand me that box, the one thing I didn't tell you last night, that one. Oh, I almost dropped it. I've been ill. I did. We don't want that.